Hi guys, welcome back on my channel, Dorota Palska International Nail Artist and Educator and today we are going to paint a little bit more advanced uh, nail art and this is going to be a promise to the winter scenery and you can have a wee preview of this design in here yeah, so we're going to paint like a river, a little bit of snow, which looks more like unreal snow and a bridge as well. And I hope you really enjoy watching this uh, a little bit more advanced tutorial. If you're new in here, hit the, hit the subscribe button as there is lots of great tutorials coming up every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday. And if you're existing subscriber, thank you so much for your continuing support, for watching those videos, for your likes, shares and comments. Let's start this video. So that's the stuff which we are going to need for this uh, scenery, which we are going to paint on this tip. And I will just put them on the mixing palette. And I didn't mix those colors before because I want to show you like why I like the Color Plus gels. They're really highly pigmented gels. Uh, so you need just like a small drops of it. And what I'm doing is I'm putting a oh, tiny bit of the each color. So this one is a yellow. Then we've got some red. They don't take too much space, but I like it. The fact that uh, I can create so many different colors with them. And basically you need just five gels to paint anything, like absolutely anything. And they really last you a long time as well. So now the blue, I need a little bit more. And my favorite ones, so the Color Plus comes with the original white and black, but I quite like the paint on French gel because I can use it not only for the uh, painting, but also for the French, for sugaring and all sorts of different things. So this is my must have one. And the foil design gel, which I use instead of the black. You don't need much of it, just a small drop. Okay, now I show you how I create the colors as well. So for this set, we are going to need some orange and to create the orange, I'm mixing red and yellow. And I've got some nice orange. If I want to create a lighter color, I would add a drop of the white into it. So I can create some pastel -y orange, but I can also create a nice pink as well, mixing red and white. Actually, I might do it here. So I've got some pink. And if I add the drop of the blue into my red and pink, I can create a nice purple. If I want some of the colors to get lighter, I would add a white. If I want some colors to get uh, darker, I would add a drop of the black. Okay, so I have created quite a few colors. And now we are going to paint those uh, winter scenery. And I'm going to start painting like a place where there is going to be a bridge. So I've got some orange. And you're painting like an upside down, like a rainbow shape. Oh, there we are. That's the easiest way to explain it. So I'm painting rainbow shape. Also, I like to work with the drop of the top coat later on, especially when we're going to add those detail. So I'm just going to put a few drops of the top coat. And it's a pretty time consuming design, like really is going to take ages. Would I paint it on the client's news? Uh, I did paint it actually once winter scenery. It was also in a scratch magazine as well. Um, but it was really time consuming, like, so yes, once or sometimes I would, I would do it for like some of my clients, like kind of more advanced design. So this is to give a little bit of thickness to my bridge. Okay, and then there is a part which is underneath, so I'm adding a drop of the black into my orange. 
I don't want it to be too strongly black, like uh, just a little bit. And now I'm going to start painting from the half of the bridge. Just so it is like a wee shadow. When painting such a small detail, like every single stroke of the brush really matters. Okay, so this is a part of the bridge which is more visible from underneath. I'm just going to make it a little bit thicker. And at this stage, everything looks kind of flat ish. But we will be adding lots of more detail into it. Okay, under bridge we are going to have some water and the water which is just totally under bridge is going to be a little bit darker so to my blue I'm adding a drop of the black. With my top coat. Just great kind of we shadow from the bridge and the rest of the water is going to be those kind of uh, purpley pinkyish color so I've got couple colors and uh, different colors on my on my brush And then the next part of the river, which is just going behind it. Very light on the top because we still got lots of work to be done on the bridge part. So don't go overly too dark. So first of all, we're really kind of indicating where the things are, to be honest. And then the river is going just to be hardly visible up in the horizon. I'm going to give it a flash cure now. And flash cure is just a couple seconds cure to freeze what we have painted. So I can move on into the next stages of the painting the bridge as well. So the bridge is going to have some snow on the top of it. So I need to use white with a tiny bit of the oranges. And again, it is just a splash of the color. I think so this is a part where the snow is going to be visible. I can work through the underneath of the bridge now more. So we're using the black. Add the thickness to the bridge.
So you can already see how much the shape of the bridge has changed just by adding the bottom part of it. Okay, we can also, at this stage, we can also create the parts where the snow is. So this is just like a pile of the snow. And then go into your blue and white and do a couple of the touches. So this is a place where there is a um, piece of the land with some snow. Again, it is only a splash of the color to start off. Okay, I can start creating the edges of the river. And the snow parts. So kind of messy. White and blue color ish. Not too strong around the bridge area because we've got lots of work to do on the bridge. Now I have added lots of top coat. And the top part, because the river is kind of like a pink purple-ish, even orangey, that's where the sky is going to be as well like a kind of sunset almost colors. So I need to just clean my brush a little bit, too much product in there and add a drop of the top gel and just fade that in. So my sky needs to be the same color what the river is. Kind of pinkish. Okay, give it a freeze. Now I'm going to add a drop of the black into my orange and red to create a kind of brown color because we are going to need it for the bridge as well. Because that's the next part which we're going to finish. So now I can really work on the shape of my bridge. So this part is visible from underneath. And this part is kind of more visible from the top. But it looks still really flat-ish. So we will need to add all those little stones to make it beautiful. I just guys want to show you like how much 
painting and how much hard work it takes actually to paint something really nice. Okay, now I'm going to pick up my orange and white, kind of different shade. And I'm starting painting those wee stones. You could also paint it in a briquette shape as well. But this one is going to be a stone bridge. Then add a drop of the black, so we create a darker one. And add a couple more. Now I'm going to cure it. And start painting the trees as well just so we can outline them too. So the trees are going to be a kind of like a purplish color. And what I'm doing is I'm just creating a couple of the splashes of the color. So it looks kind of like a wee trees which are in there and obviously the more on the back I go the lighter and more smudgy we do okay so it's just a couple of the lines one side other side so it looks like an we tree But it's still kind of a background only picture. So we're only kind of applying the colors through it. A bit more detail on the bridge. Now I'm starting painting a proper snow. And this snow needs to even out my shape of the bridge. I can take a little bit of the top coat mixed with the black and add more shadow through my water. So to do the shadow, I'm mixing the top coat with the color I want to use. On the top, we are going to paint the other part of the bridge. So I'm mixing my black with the brown.
and I'm painting one line. Don't use pure black, like that would be kind of pretty too strong. So we've got the ones which are behind and we've got the ones which are on the front. Okay. And now we just have to join them in. I can give it a flash cure. And we can work through the next step. So if I, have, if I have worked on the bridge, I'm going to leave the bridge alone now before I add any more detail. And I'm going to concentrate on this part now again. So lots of top coat, tiny bit of blue, a little bit of purple. And I'm going to blend this place out. So it's basically like an artist painting and picture. It's just taking ages, guys. But it starts looking better and better with every single move of the brush. Okay, so I've got some oranges going through it. And I'm going to do exactly the same on the top as well. So lots of top coat and I'm just applying another layer of the color into my river. Okay, I'm going to give it a flash cure again. And let's finish this pile of the snow. So I've got some white. And I'm just touching up with the snow. Lots of lots of wee shaky parts. I also need to do that on the edges of the river as well. Like I need to create a nicer snow. Okay, so lots of lots of messy kind of look because the snow is not flat now the trees which are behind i can just 
kind of give them a little bit of snow as well. But this snow needs to be messy, like and kind of foggy, so not as not as strong because those trees are behind. Now let's go back to the bridge. We need to finish the detail on it. So I've got hardly any paint on my brush, like really hardly any paint. Hold my breath and now just finish off the detail on the bridge. So this is the edge of the bridge. And same the one inside, it needs to be sharp, sharpen up. It's a hardly visible line, but all those details change a lot. Okay, now I need to also add a drop of the snow on the handles of the bridge. But just in some places and they're just tiny, tiny ones. So you can see this part of, of the picture start looking much better. Give it a freeze. And I still want to make the part where the stones of the bridge are much nicer. So I have picked another color. And I'm going to paint another stone in there. This is something which might be hardly visible, but I think those details change a lot. Now we can move on into the part which is on the top. I'm just going to grab a tiny bit more white because we need to add a decent pile of snow in here. So we're just painting a bit of snow. And then taking my top gel, and concentrate on the trees. So I've got some black mixed with the purple. Even stronger mixture. Just 
just so we can create a wee shadow in these places. So there are some trees which are behind it and there will be some trees which will be on front. I'm just going to do exactly the same in here. And when I'm working with the shadow, I'm going to add a little shadows in here as well, because otherwise the edges doesn't look kind of nice and natural. So this one is hardly visible, this one is more visible. A drop of black snow on top of it. So it might look like a wee stone or something in there. Okay, give it a flash cure again. Now another layer of the trees and now we are going to paint them nicer. So pinks and purples. And this first tree is going to be the nicest one because this one is the most visible one. Then there is another one. And I'm going to do exactly the same in here. So this first two are going to be the most visible ones. I have to flash cure it before I can move on into the next step. This is all about layering paint on top of the paint. In this style of painting. Okay, and then one is flash cure. I'm going to move on into the next step. So I have added lots of white into my purple like lots of white because now I need to do the shape of the tree but also I need to add the snow to it so you can see now I'm kind of like indicating where the branches are so you can tell it is a tree Okay, and it has a shape of the tree. I'm going to do it exactly the same in here.
and give it a flash cure. So it already starts looking much better. We still need to work on the snow which is on the sides. And I could, could I could go on and like add the detail and add the detail. So the more I add it, the more beautiful it is going to look like. So the water in here, I need to blend a little bit this parts. And kind of give it a little wave to it even. A bit of the top coat just to blend that out. Now concentrate on the snow which is on the side. So with this this one I'm just adding a couple of the lighter colors. Just to show they are piles of the snow. Okay, and then we have to finish uh, the horizon line. So the horizon line is just in here. And I'm going to take some yellow mixed with the orange kind of almost pinkish color I would say that's a nice one and we start fading so it's almost like a wee sunset in there and the same color needs to go to the water Okay, tidy up the river edge. And here is my horizon. I'm going to give it a flash cure. We can also paint like on very small beards which are uh, just behind it. Don't make them too black because it will be too strong color. So I'm just going to mix it a little bit of white with black to kind of create a grayish color and I'm going to paint those beards in here okay so just the two tiny ones going to give it a flash cure again we're almost done with this design, so kind of something a little bit more advanced. I hope you still enjoy it and can learn something from it. Okay, the parts which I'm not liking is still the river edge in here. I need to sharpen it up and then add some snow. Also, I'm going to paint like a bigger pile of the snow here as well. So 
a bit of shadow and shadow is a black and a top coat and then some snow on top of it okay so this way you can see it the edge of the ground I might do it exactly the same on the other side yeah, so it looks more realistic So top coat to make it, it darker. And then pile of the snow. And that's already look much better. I'm going to give it a flash cure. I might just ch touch up the trees and I don't keep you bored <laughs> anymore because it's a really small details now. I keep kind of adding on. <laughs> but I enjoy it. I, I really love this kind of painting. It looks really ugly to start off like a splash of the color, I always call it. So I'm just working on the detail. Because obviously the more layers we put on, the nicer things looks. I mean, we have painted the snow before, but you can guys see it by if I'm adding another row of the snow. That looks much prettier. And then this way I have created another tree which is just behind it. Yeah, I think I'm going to stop it at this part. And we will do just some 3D touch to it as well. So I'm just going to put it inside the lamp quickly. Give it a cure. So it will be a 60 seconds cure and then apply the top coat. We are going to use the high shine uh, top, no wipe top gel. And then we will sprinkle with the sugar so it looks like unreal snow. I hope you have liked this uh, tutorial. I know it looks pretty crap from the beginning, like when 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 you're doing just a splash of the color. Um, but yeah, it's the same way how I paint the faces as well. I will do just like a splash of the color to start off and then by adding the detail, keep adding the detail, we can make the things much more pre prettier. <laughs> so it's a time for a top coat. I'm just applying the top coat. Like make sure you cover all the design. And yes, I take ages to apply the top coat, but I kind of search how the light reflect on the tip as well. And uh, if I'm not happy, I retouch it. Sometimes it may happen that there is a wee bits and pieces of the dust or something, and you don't want that on your piece of art you have created. Uh, so the next step, once this is all cured, we are going to use the paint on French gel to give it like this nice snowy effect. Only in some places, don't overdo it because it's such a delicate design that if you overdo it, it might look pretty heavy. So I'll be using only 
actually I might squeeze out a fresh one on my mixing palette because the other one has the top coat but also you have seen it like how many beautiful colors you can create using just basically three primary colors plus white and black okay so that's this tip all nicely cured and now i'm just going to add the snowy detail so i want the snow to be really nice and sparkly here and you could leave it just like this as well the paint on french gel is so fab that you don't have to even top coat it okay so i've got the pile of the snow in here got some pile of the snow in there Try to don't pick up the places which you got those darker colors because they look kind of quite cool. So don't don't apply it on those darker colors. And I'm not doing overly too thick lines, like really tiny ones. Uh, just because um, this design is quite delicate and if I would overdo it, then it wouldn't look nice. It just would be too overdone. Okay, that's as plenty. And she keep going here. Yeah? And the ones on the top, just the tiniest, tiniest ones. Perfect. Okay. We could leave it like this and it looks more 3D as well, but I'm going to sprinkle with the glitter. Yes, I love glitter. <laughs> so just a nice sprinkle with the glitter. Tap, tap, remove the excess. And now I'm going to give it a cure, 60 seconds cure. And then I show you the final results. If you have enjoyed watching this tutorial, share it with your favorite friend, new technician, um, or maybe with your students, or with, uh, with other, I don't know, new technicians. Uh, just keep sharing these videos, guys. Like, give me motivation to produce more of those nicer longer and easier tutorials because there is lots of stuff actually on the channel if you're new in here hit the subscribe button if you're existing uh, subscriber let me know down in the comments below what you think of this video and also if you have never seen previous tutorials there's lots of quite nice ones like how to do the nails like this or like this i actually got some here on the side as well so uh, they are tutorials on those type of nails and here as well and on some one stroke flowers which are my favorite ones as well so lots of different things uh, on this channel but that's my tip cure and i'm just going to remove the excess of the glitter so the glitter is going to stick and only to some places and i show you the final look so that's what we have created today yeah i hope you have oh no that's not good i hope you have that's good i hope you have really enjoyed watching this tutorial glittery hacks and bye for now Thank you.